sometimes it's just hard to discern what games to play. So let me, a Christian gamer, help you by recommending some games. Shalom, I'm Noah Price, you Christian Gamer. I love RPGs and JRPGs. And today I'm going to suggest five games that you, a Christian, should play. And right off the bat, starting off strong, number one is probably one of my favorite games that's on this list. And it's one where when I really th rethought about this game, I was like, this game was great. <laughs> Yes, right off the bat, we're talking about Banner Saga. Banner Saga is an interesting, unique, stylized, tactical RPG. With its not-so-common setting being in Norse mythology and its art style being hand-drawn, it already starts off strong with being so eye-catching. But the combat itself is so unique for a tactical RPG. Instead of having a distinct value of how much damage you do per character, your character is actually tied with your health. So attacking someone and almost killing them makes them not only almost dead, again good for you, but it also makes it harder for them to deal damage towards you. A interesting value of what do you want to target? Do you want to target their vigor, their health, or do you want to take care of their defense so that you can deal even more damage, heavier blows to their health? But the interesting combat doesn't just stop there. While that's very interesting, they also have other mechanics like willpower, which is a little like choice of inspiration of, hey, do you want to use a willpower to go extra farther in your movement? Do you want to deal an extra pip of damage? Or do you want to spend it to do a special move that a clear character has? This choice alone makes it very fun in combat and very flowy of what do I want to do? But if you're somebody in a JRPG who wants a little bit more from their game than just a really good combat and a good story, if you actually want to make choices like I believe most RPGs should have, well, fear not, Banner Saga has a great choice mechanic. Outside of combat, there's a Switch gameplay of Oregon Trail, basically. <laughs> Of, of traveling from one destination to another, you have to kind of manage a little bit of morale and food management, but on top of that, you have these choices of talking with different characters and dialogue, and depending on what you choose, characters can die, and you could actually possibly recruit characters. Extending even further is this game is a trilogy. Better Sonic has three games in it where Mass Effect boasted of how, hey, you're, 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 Decisions right in, in game one will impact your journey through game two and game three of who gets to join you and follow you throughout the games. Banner Saga does the same thing, but I argue from what little I've researched into Mass Effect, this game does it better with actually having more choices have impact. So the story complexity actually changes and it makes this game very fun to go across. So right off the bat, I recommend Banner Saga to you if you want to play a game that has a very interesting combat that's very engaging and fun, a cool art style, a really good setting. Honestly, the story with it is just, it's so good. It's so worth the, how cheap this game is, especially for all three games. It's definitely worth it. Even just if you have to play just the first game, the story alone in that one game is so good. But no game's perfect, what are the red flags that this game has? And I'm not talking about the banners in it. What specific red flags that you as Christians should maybe watch out for if you do want to play this game? Probably the biggest one is that, well, this is Norse mythology. That is the setting of this game. So that could be a problem towards you if you think that's going to be a problem. I, I, I haven't found many Christians who have a problem with playing or, or ingesting media that has them in North mythology, but I do think it's worth mentioning because it's very seeped in there. You got the world serpent, you have an interesting apocalyptic story that this game seeped in. And probably the second like red flag is that there's some elements or some characters that are kind of basically witchcraft. Basically with how they're actually introduced and shown to, it literally looks way more into what us as Christians would look at past and as a witchcraft. And so maybe that could be a problem that you could run into. They're, they're not that many, they're very few, but that is something to keep in mind. Second game I'm recommending is Valkyria Chronicles 4. Now, this is a game I actually reviewed on this channel, but I, I it's not really the most popular video that I've done on the channel. Either way, I, this is still a great game, and so I, I just want to recommend it to you. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is a interesting tactical JRPG. Unlike most games that have just a flat grid base where you're looking top down to play your combat, this game kind of switches from top down tactical 
tactical style to a more fluid first person mode. And yes, right off the bat, you already see it. Yes, this is also a weird tactical game that has guns. For most of the JRPGs tactical games that I've played, most of them are more in the medieval era. This game takes place more of a weird, futuristic, modern context where there is a bunch of tanks and guns. But honestly, just the combat here is so amazing and unique of getting to have this tactical game, but still have it mixed with this first person mode. It's something I've never seen anywhere else. And the combat is just it's very fun i will say the the storytelling of this game is very much like it's a war story which you know that could be good or bad depending on what you want there is two two red flags i have for this game though if you are gonna want to play this one it is um anime-esque so you come into the normal problem with most anime games where certain characters are a little bit more uh scandally clad or a little bit more seductively dressed you might say especially in a military setting where it's like, I don't think you'd be dressed like that, but here you are, anime character. And probably the second one has to deal with the combat. While it is fun to have this first person to tactical mode turn based, it can be slightly jank. There's a few times where you can easily mess up your movement a little bit or, or where you're aiming to attack somebody can be slightly off and just jankily kind of miss something, which in a tactical game can be like massive. So that's something that I think you should keep in mind, but still a game I recommend to a lot of people. Game number three is Disgaea. Specifically Disgaea 5 Complete because that's the one I played. I put in like seven hours this game because there was a drought period in the Switch Online, Switch game, I don't know why I said online, but in the Switch library, there was a drought of RPGs, JRPGs, and so I wanted to play something. So I played Disgaea. Guess what? I'm actually not <laughs> recommending this game. If there's this guy of friends out there, I, I'm sorry, but this is a game where one, it has the anime problem and there's certain levels of it. Certain JRPGs have these levels where it's like, all right, you have the JRPG problem of anime people looking a little bit lewd. And then, and then there's like a degree more that like are a different subset of like genre that I usually don't step my toes in. It's just where every character's a little bit more just like overtly dressed like lewd like so i usually don't step my toes in this again this was a drought period so i did play this for a bit and then one i did not like it for the anime-esque and then again the combat is not my favorite while it still has that tactical jrpg feel to it uh it does have an interesting combo system where it's built on you building combos and putting your characters on top of each other and attacking i i couldn't quite figure it out uh but i thought it was kind of cool because it's a different kind of combo system. But at the same time, I didn't like it because it also looked goofy. So yeah, I don't know. I'm going to throw you a curveball and, and uh, give you a game I don't recommend. <laughs> game number four, Triangle Strategy. Kind of weird. I should probably made this number three because get it, Triangle. But here we go. Number four. <laughs> Triangle Strategy is an interesting Square Enix tactical JRPG that they made. The pros are this game does have that Final Fantasy tactics feel. It has that good old combat from that game that everybody loves. It has not only a traditional tactical strategy of, hey, we got a grid that we're on. It has a little bit of verticality to it of like, hey, there's some spots that are like a little bit higher that gives advantage compared to people who are lower. You also have some interesting elemental spells that come into play play and then you got some good old classic Square Enix storytelling so it's like with this combination it's overall a pretty good game and especially with triangle strategy specifically it does have a interesting extra storytelling mechanic called uh basically they have the scales of time is that what it's called i don't know i had some kind of scales where you actually get to vote on certain situations so in the story there's certain paths you could take and you are trying to sway your party into having i don't know why everybody's got to vote by the way you are having your your people your, your your team your party vote for a certain uh way in the story and they could vote the other way <laughs> and so you have to decide to go on the story beaten path a different way choices actually have matter and i love that in video games 
But there is problems to this game, and it's a very slight one, but like, I'm gonna be honest, most of these games that I'm recommending are games that I actually have beaten, because uh, that just means that I have played through the game. There isn't something at the very last part that's like, oh, that's actually not good. And so I, I prefer to recommend games if I've actually beaten it. That's a red flag here. I haven't beaten this game. Now, I was playing a lot of this on the channel here, Scrub, the game where I let's play games. Sometimes I stream games that I actually try to review on this channel so that you could go watch me my experience there in depth if something gets cut out in the video check that out if you want to but i was playing through triangle strategy and then i just kind of stopped mostly because there was multiple games i was playing and so i got busy overall i think that just shows a little bit of how important this game was or how great it was is that it kind of is a slightly boring. I enjoyed it a lot, and there's a lot to the storytelling, the gameplay side. It has a bit of that whole, like, almost Game of Thrones politics that some people like. So it has a lot of that, if you love that. But in the end of the day, a critique I saw from other creators is that, hey, this game just makes you want to play Final Fantasy Tactics. Kind of reminds you, like, oh yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics was great. Let me go play that. But that's the only red flag I kind of have for this game. So it's still good. I still recommend it, but, you know, maybe play Final Fantasy Tactics instead. The final game I'm recommending today for game number five shouldn't surprise anybody, but honestly, it's Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, yes, it is kind of cringe to say Fire Emblem Three Houses out of all the games, out of all the Fire Emblem games I could I could point to and recommend to you. But honestly, this is just one of my favorite Fire Emblem games. I think there's a lot there you could enjoy from having almost that Pokemon experience of like, hey, which version are you picking? But instead, you only have to buy one game and then you have three routes you could go. Do you want to pick this house? Do you want to pick this? house this house has replayability because of that the storytelling in this game is always fun just like a good fire emblem game it has that typical storytelling vibe to it uh, where it's not final fancy where it can get too far away with like weird concepts and just get like what's what's truly going on but it has a lot of charm to it and it's uh, as always set in a wartime theme <laughs> because of course it is your dad's jiraiya so like you know that's a that's a point that's that's one plus point there because that's pretty cool now in all preference i've only played <laughs> the golden deer route i've only played one route hey i'm busy with a bunch of games okay i don't got time to play all the reps i do plan on playing in the, the other routes but i haven't done it so take that for whatever whatever it's worth but specifically with Fire Emblem Three Houses, the weird story progression, I like a lot. I actually really enjoyed the interesting flowiness that you have as a teacher to, to choose your party members. In a lot of tactical games, especially Fire Emblem games, you have a set squad that they give you and you can recruit more dudes later on, but all of them are a certain class and you can't change that. In this game, you have the weird flowy nature of, hey, you can like make all your units healers. I wouldn't recommend it, but you, could and so that flexibility alone is pretty unique to a tactical game and i i don't know i just love it a lot it's really good now it does make the whole triangle system that fire emblem is kind of known for of hey swords and axes and spears what are you going up against and one starting the other they kind of got rid of that so that you could just play wherever you want but i think that uniqueness here is pretty fun and enjoyable this game is a good game worth your money definitely check it out i don't know what what are red flags one of them not surprising anyone and anime designs it's always the anime designs <laughs> With these gosh darn JRPGs, how dare they? It's not surprising, but yes, there are some anime designs that are like, okay, I don't know why this minor, this not adult, but a child is dressed this way. Don't like that. But for the most part, most of the characters aren't dressed that poorly. Like, honestly, I stopped playing Fire Emblem Engage because of some of the character designs, and I didn't hear that's something. And probably the second thing is that technically it could be looked bad because it's a red flag because they made the church look bad and very culty i would say the church is a cult that's 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 just what it is uh in fire Emblem three houses but at the same time i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because let's be honest um the church and other religious structures like it like mormons it's it's cult it really is they're very culty in structure and how they perform yeah so not a bad thing in my book because guess what those religions can be very culty and even christianity and how it's run a pastor has a lot of charismatic leadership and honestly they could sin and do a bad thing and they could basically run their church as a cult and be self-centered and that's not a good thing 
but it's definitely something that is real. And so getting experience here, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think if anything, it brings more awareness to show us to that. Same time, I don't think it's really trying to be culty. So it might just be like, ah, see, that's how all of them are like. It's like, I, I don't know about that, but either way but those are the five games that i recommend to you to play I, they're, they're games that have problems they're not necessarily just straightforward christian like games they are secular but let's be honest i they're games that i suggest there's something that if somebody came along to me and be like hey what games should i play these are games that would be on my list that i would recommend and disguise is a game i would not recommend check out this video right here if you want to watch me talk about asymmetrical games what are asymmetrical games well come over here and play watch this game Come over here, this is where I stream. I stream games. Yeah, I do it. Those are some tactical games, I think. If I put them up there, I don't know. <laughs> Have a good day. Jesus loves you. Bye, guys. Shalom. Shalom. Bye. Are you gone? No? We'll click one of those videos, please. Bye.